So in this lesson we're going to discuss how we can use masking in Photoshop in conjunction with groups or folders in our layers so that we have a lot more control over our file and we can do a lot more. So with that said, I have um, this picture here of the lizard and my goal is going to be to fit it within this box shape here that we've got going on. Now of course you all know that you could transform things. Um, so we're, we could free transform it to get to get it the size we want. But if we want to be able to fit it within this box, we're going to have to use a mask. So basically I've got this outline layer um, and we want to be able to fit this to where it stays inside of this box. Um, and we want to keep the composition of the lizard so that um, it does fill as much of the space as possible. So we'll get it into position first. And then, of course, you all know that we can mask things. So we have two options here. We could try to select this rectangle um, with a rectangular marquee, or because we do have a layer to work with, we can um, click Command, and then on top of this thumbnail preview of our layer of our outline, we can actually click on it and now it's going to be able to um, allow us to select just this one shape because the layer only has a rectangle on it. Now in some cases when you are um, doing various types of illustrations and selections and stuff you may actually select um, using like a magic wand magic wand or a quick selection tool. So either way is going to get you the selection you need. But in this case, because it is a pretty basic shape, we can hit command and um, click on the thumbnail preview and now we have a selection here. Now you all know that if we have something selected and we click on that lizard layer now, it stays inside of that mask, which is exactly what we want. However, we want to be able to fill the rest of this shape here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take that mask and get rid of it real quick. And we will put that lizard inside of our group. Now, if for some reason I had masked this outline and masked this layer, and I want to just quickly move it, I should be able to just quickly move it to um, a group if I want to and it'll apply it to anything that's inside of this group. So this group is a way to keep things together and now this mask will affect anything inside of that folder or that group. So with that said again it's as easy as just literally dragging that mask back and forth to wherever you need it. Um, now you can still, and this is again where we have a lot more power, you, you can technically, and just for demonstration purposes I'll show you, you could still mask this layer. So if you paint with black on that, you now have two masks that are affecting this one image. So the mask that's on the group is affecting it, but then we also have the mask on the layer. Now, of course, I don't need that in this instance. I actually want to be able to create um, a new amount of pixels here so that it continues that area of my photo. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. I'll just call it purple. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our gradient tool and we will learn a lot more about gradients but just as a basic primer I'm going to test um, the color from this photo and in some cases you may not get the color perfect the first time around but that's okay so we'll just test a color and the way the gradient works is um, we have the ability to choose a gradient that is from a foreground color to a transparent color and so basically we can drag a gradient across and notice that this is going on my purple layer so that's one thing you do want to pay attention to and we can basically pull this gradient as many times as you need to so that it covers up any of the pixels that you do not really want showing in that original image and then of course we can mask this further so this is again where we have a lot of potential with masks to be able to show and reveal so I've got a mask applied to this purple layer and now when I go in and paint of course if I have a softer brush it'll help me and if I lower the opacity and the flow just a little bit 
we can transition things just a little bit more. And again, notice how it is not affecting anything outside um, because we do have full ability to um, you know, have fun and paint. And so it's allowing me to control just what's happening on my gradient layer. But this mask right here is basically controlling what is on my actual um, or what is within my actual group so it keeps it contained within this rectangle. So again masks are um, super powerful in Photoshop. You do want to know how to use them with not just layers but with groups and that's going to give you a lot more potential to paint more freely within um, Photoshop and to have a lot more fun um, within the spaces that you work.